Well, you know, trend-wise, we've seen a lot more, you know, regulated uh, security type tokens. Um, it, it seems like the the Wild West ICO boom is over, and now people are, are trying sort of other variations of that. Uh, some of which are, you know, more uh, trying to work within the existing uh, system for tokens. Um, but but really. Uh, over the past year, you know, a lot of the focus seems to have shifted back to just simple, you know, money, uh, Bitcoin, store of value, Lightning payments. Um, you know, we're we're focused on those two things, and uh, the the Lightning side has definitely evolved a lot over the past year. We've uh, we've seen a lot of growth in the system, uh, both at the the net the network and the protocol level, and also the the economy that's really growing up around that and, and various services and uh, applications that are tying into the Lightning Network. Well, I mean, this entire space is still experimental. And so, you know, you basically see bubbles of experimentation. You know, somebody has an idea and then a lot of other people may see that and say, oh, that's a great idea, but I don't want to help you with that. I want to do it myself and put my own twist on it. And uh, and, and that, that works all good and well until the, the hype reaches a point that's not sustainable anymore and then it all crashes back down. We pick up the pieces and start over again. Well, we're thinking that the trend that's coming is going to be security tokens. That's why we're building out liquid securities. We're working with several different uh, security token offering platforms like Tokensoft, uh, Bank to Future, and there are new exchanges being launched that will support security tokens. So, we're in talks with all of them, but we see it still probably one to two years away before it really gets um, it really gets big and hyped mm -hmm. up. But we want to be there and building out the key infrastructure elements right now before it gets really crazy. Well, there will always be ICOs and IEOs, but I think that trend is on the decline right now because investors are starting to smarten up a little bit and mm -hmm. realize that you know there's no there's no security backing this token. It's just a token that someone can deliver or will not deliver and either way you have no protection legally mm -hmm. and I think uh, for savvier investors they do a little bit of digging and they just mm -hmm. see these token projects typically just decline they just go down this way you know stuff runs downhill shit runs downhill <laughs> and I think they're getting wiser I think we're seeing um, you know the bear market in 2018 kind of shook out a lot of the uh, poor quality assets and kind of the people who are just coming as the kind of, uh, you know, bandwagon fans just kind of coming into the space to take advantage of the irrational exuberance. And so I think we saw that kind of shook out and now we see the serious people building real things. So I think the, I think what we're seeing is, you know, maybe we'll finally see some trickle of institutional adoption. You know, the herd is coming is the same, but it's taken a little while for them to come. I think we're going to start to see a glimmer of that as we've got the 2020 presidential election. Mm -hmm. We've got a macro backdrop of kind of a, you know, get the, the, the president of the United States tweeting at the Federal Reserve. We've got different social issues, different economic issues across the whole world. And we've got the Bitcoin halving event. I think we're, we're due for a, a boom, another, another bull cycle here in 2020. And I think what's changed is the macro backdrop. Um, Bitcoin is getting primed and ready to go for that while the world is kind of undergoing a little bit of uncertainty and a little bit of chaos. So right now markets are re-evaluating all the solutions what they already existing on the market. So a lot of altcoins, a lot of ICOs, a lot of uh, startups possibly doesn't survive because it doesn't have real economy, they doesn't have real users, they doesn't solve real problems. And uh, this meaning a lot of the projects it's sad to say, but they may not, not survive. Mm -hmm. And the more useful projects, I think they can gain more uh, support. Also, the economical situation right now, they are facing like third wave of the coming crisis. It can play huge, like, uh, 
push up for, for cryptocurrencies to grow up and solve additionally a lot of problems of existing financial system. The, the crisis is affecting everyone, so there is not about just the companies, it's also about the individuals. No exclusions. I think the biggest trend is definitely privacy this year, right? So there's two trends that I've seen. The first one uh, started uh, after UASF and Node2x, which was run your own node, mm -hmm. right? The idea of running your own full node was not like something very popular, right, in 2014, 2015. I mean, some, some uh, more uh, uh, expert people might say, yeah, it's important to run a full node, but now it's becoming uh, cool, right? It's becoming fashionable. I run my full node, people take screenshots of their node, they take photos of their physical nodes. You've seen physical nodes going, software to make it easier, uh, BTC Pay uh, server, the node launcher back here, Richard, the Noddle, the CASA, Cypher node. All those projects, if, if you remember, I mean, it's, it, the time goes really fast in Bitcoin, but I mean, most of these projects have been going on for only a year or year and a half. This is a very, very new trend. Um, the idea of self-custody is becoming kind of a given, right? It's not, now it's becoming obvious. You should run a node and you should hold your keys. Something that if people remember correctly, you know, back in the day, uh, a lot of people were storing their coins on exchanges and hot wallets. And, you know, it was considered to be a normal thing. You say, hey, if you want Bitcoin to be accepted by the mainstream, you need to have custodians of this. Now, you know, the narrative is shifting a little bit. You know, uh, you should do self-custody and the, and the Custodians are using multi-signature. They're much more sophisticated about that. And the last big trend that I've seen is uh, uh, privacy, so uh, coin join, right? So during the last year, we've seen Wasabi wallets get created, uh, and then you've seen exchanges like Bull Bitcoin actually implementing this with user volume and putting some volume into this. So there's absolutely, definitely a big adoption of coin join. We are seeing the number of coin join transactions on the network rising. Um, uh, some people are keeping track of it, five, six percent now of Bitcoin transactions are coin joined, which is great mm -hmm. because a year ago it was zero. <laughs> In a half ago it was zero, so that's fantastic. We've seen the Samurai Wallet develop their, their privacy solutions as well. Um, join Market has existed for a while, but the volume on Join Market is, is picking up. So I think that users are much more conscious right now of the, of the risk of not using coin join transactions. And um, yeah, I think that's, that's the main trends. And obviously a, a big trend that I've been seeing is uh, just Bitcoin maximalism generally, right? So a philosophical very activist movement that's saying, um, you know, uh, that's, that's conceiving Bitcoin as a, or conceiving currency markets in general as a win or lose market, right? There's going to be one dominant currency at the end. The idea of the multi-currency universe, I think, is fading away. And the realization that um, Bitcoin is kind of like, as Dan Hedl says, is the apex predator of money. It's a dark hole that absorbs everything else. And we should focus back our efforts onto Bitcoin. I think this is becoming a, a big narrative.